Hi there, this is Allison from Boomerang Pilates and today we're going to do an ankle and calf and foot focused um, stretching session so you can follow along with me. Everybody has a different degree of tension in their, uh, in their calves through the lower calf, this is the soleus, the upper calf is the gastrocnemius. They have an effect on how your body can move through your gait, um, determines how easy it is to get your legs straight and how mobile you can be through your feet. Can have a crazy effect in your back, which is kind of interesting. So if you're really tight, we use, often use these half domes, which are not really a half dome, it's a half cylinder. And we use that to create a stretch through the calf. This might be too much for you, in which case, you could use a bean bag, you could use a rolled up towel, you can use something that's gonna give you exactly the right amount of height for you, right? Take your bean bag and roll it up two times. You want to get both feet pointing straight forward, even though that feels crazy pigeon toed. So you'll see how quickly I do this a lot, and still for me, particularly my back foot wants to turn it. So make sure you're getting both feet pointing forward, legs hip distance apart, and then let your weight set back over your heels and try to get your legs straight up and down, so you get a little bit of support from your lateral hips. You don't necessarily need to feel a big stretch here. You want to make sure that you don't feel a whole bunch of tension in the front of your ankle. If you're feeling a whole whack of that, even if you don't feel a stretch through your calf in through here, it means you've bypassed the, you've gone past the amount of length you have available in your calf and the front of your shin is taking over. And then you can shift over and do the same thing on the other side. This is more about finding your boundaries and not so much about a huge stretch. So if you're feeling more than a three or four out of 10 stretch here, you could take your back foot back a little bit. I have super tight calves and ankles, so this is my, this is my positioning. You may have more mobility. You might be here. You might even be able to go here with your foot forward, but it's different for everyone and you need to gauge your own positioning. So then we're going to move up into the, or move down rather, into the soleus, which is the lower of your calf muscles. Same thing, get your feet nicely organized, pointing straight forward, and this time you're going to bend your knees. You're going to let your butt stick behind you a little bit as you do that, rather than tucking your butt forward. You can also take the other foot forward if you have the mobility for it and do the stretch here. This again, you could end up feeling lots of compression in the front of the ankle, in which case you probably want to step back a little bit and keep straightening out your other foot. And then you shift over and you do the same thing on the other side. I realize this is not perhaps the most exciting of exercises, but honestly, do this and then go for a walk and you will feel so fluid and your gait is so much more unrestricted by the tension in those lower leg tissues. When we walk, in theory, you should be able to keep your heel on the ground for quite a long time behind you before you step forward again. And for most of us, the heel really pops up quite quickly and this is intended to get you more of that posterior stride that lets you um, get really good butt and leg work when you walk. So now we're going to work on that a little bit. You'll have one foot on the half dome or the bean bag or the towel or whatever it is that you're using. And you're going to step forward and back. And forward and back. You'll notice how quickly your back foot wants to turn out because that's taking all its, the balance. So really try and keep that back foot or the non-stretching foot pointing forward so that you use your gluteus medius and gluteus minimus to help keep your balance. And you step back, so you may feel way more stretch in the back of the, of the supported foot when your other foot is forward than you do when your other foot is back. So this just takes the same thing and becomes a little bit more dynamic. And then you change over, you do the same thing again on the other side. Get yourself set, legs hip distance apart, pelvis square to the front, step forward, step back. So the propelling comes from the back of the stretching leg rather than 
from the free leg. It's quite robotic. You're trying to bring your whole pelvis forward and your whole pelvis back. Whole pelvis forward, whole pelvis back. And then you can take both feet, put them onto the half dome or the towel, and send your sit bones back towards the wall behind you. If you know you're a hyperextender, which I am, we've talked about this in previous hip hinging videos, see if you can get that little bit of spin from the top of the back of the leg, engage your external rotator muscles. That may mean you need to roll a little bit onto the outside edges of your feet in order to not torque your knees, very important. So this is getting some length all the way through from the hamstrings down through the backs of the knees, through the calves and into the feet. This is the double calf stretch. And you can hang it with that. And then take a big breath and use the backs of your legs to lever yourself back up. It's important that you not um, strain your back in this one. If you find that you're coming down and, you, and you're holding yourself from your back muscles, let your upper body relax without butt tucking so that you take the strain off your back, use a little bit of, of that sense of lifting the lower ribs to maintain your um, transverse connection. Move yourself back up. Step off. Come onto the tops of your feet for the top of the foot stretch. You want to make sure that you aren't rolling over towards the baby toe side of your foot, but coming onto the top of the, of the big toe side. And then change over, do the same thing on the other side. Get a little bit of work into the hip of the standing leg. And then we're going to do two different angles for your calf stretch. So this time, you're going to turn, maybe I'll go this way so you can see me better. You're going to turn your foot out. Floor foot still pointed forward. And step forward and step back, and step forward, and step back. So we've just changed the dynamic of the ankle joint. And then you're gonna turn your foot in. And of course, if any of this is too uncomfortable, you either make your range smaller, you turn less, you step less, or you just decide that your body's not quite ready for this step yet and you skip it. And then you turn out again, and you go into your bend, getting down into the lower muscles of the limb. Pelvis nice and square to the front. And then you turn in. And you bend. So for me, this one is crazy uncomfortable. I have very, very little range in this position. That's it. That's what I can give you. It's just too tight to go anywhere else. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Start with the foot turned out. Get yourself lined up, weight onto the backs of your feet. Step forward, step back. Step forward, step back. It's really important to remember with this kind of work that it's gonna be different for everyone. If you can't get your feet pointing forward without it being uncomfortable, turn your foot in and keep stepping, then maybe it's not appropriate for you to have your feet all the way forward. If you can't do one of these foot positions without it hurting your back or without realizing that you're, you're just doing this and you're not getting any movement into your hips, there may be too much tension through your feet or your legs or your shins or your calves and it's not appropriate for you. This is not a one-size-fits-all event. Turn your leg out again. Come into your knee bend. So the, the, the foot on the half dome where the towel is turned out, the foot on the floor is straight ahead. And hang out with your little soleus stretch, letting your bum slide behind you a little bit, not by pulling into your back muscles, but by making sure you're not over pulling forward. No butt tucking and then turn your foot in. So it's incredibly important to respect your own personal boundaries, and that can be frustrating at times, but it really is the way to make sustainable, long-lasting change, and it will, it will change. And sometimes it's funny where you start to work something as insignificant seeming as 
ankle tension and it makes things all the way up the chain feel so much better. Come on off your half dome, plant your feet, slowly lift up, trying to rock forward as little as you can, keeping your ankle bones pulling slightly together so you don't bow out onto the baby toe sides of your feet and slowly slide back down. Try to keep your weight back over your heels. Normally we end up doing this when we come up on the toes. You want to try and come straight up or as close to straight up as is possible for you. And then slide back down. You'll notice I am not completely straight up. I'm tight in my calves. This is the best I can do. Lots of inner thigh in this one. Come on up. Ankle crack. Come on down. And then we're going to shift from side to side. So you're going to come up onto your heels and then we're going to combine knee bending with ankle bending as you slide back and forth from foot to foot, continuing to try and get the big toe metatarsal, so the, the inside foot bone, not just the toe, but the bone of the, of the inside edge of the foot down on the floor, right, so that you're not here. Wobble, wobble, not so much. Ideally, your legs are coming straight forward. If you can do this in front of a mirror, it is super, super helpful. One, two, three, four, lift, slide all the way back down, and then have yourselves a fabulous day and enjoy playing around with foot and ankle and calf work because everybody needs it. If you've ever worn shoes, you need it. If you've ever sat in a chair, you need it. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you next time.